This is lesson 3-4, which is arithmetic sequences. Our essential question is, how are arithmetic sequences related to linear functions? So the first example says, is the ordered list 26, 39, 52, 65, 8, 78 an arithmetic sequence? So an arithmetic sequence is a sequence where we're either adding or subtracting by the same number every time. And if it is arithmetic, that same number that we add or subtract is called the common difference. So I'm going to change colors here. So if I go from 26 to 39, I'm adding 13. And from 39 to 52, I'm adding 13. Adding 13. Adding 13. So I would say yes. Um, it is arithmetic because the common difference is 13. We'll, you'll also see the common difference written as the letter D. So you could say D is 13. Um, again, the common difference can be positive or it can be negative. So since this sequence is increasing, it's going to be a positive uh, common difference. If it was decreasing each time, then it'd be a negative common difference. B says, our, how are sequences related to functions? So like we've been doing in this chapter, we could write f of x. Well, here we can say like a of n is equal to the nth term in the sequence. So for example, we could say a of 1 equals 26, because that's the first term. We could say a of 2 equals 39, because that's the second term, and so on. And part C says, how do you represent sequences using subscript notation? So what that's going to look like is you have a little 2 as a subscript. So it's not a2, it's a with a subscript of 2. So that also, that 2 tells us what is the second term, and the second term is 39. So this notation would be another way of saying the second term is 39. Okay? So our second example says, what is the recursive formula for the height above the ground of the nth step of the pyramid shown? So in our picture, it says each step is 26 centimeters tall. So what I want to write out first is what a recursive formula looks like. So a recursive formula has two parts. It has an A1, which is going to be the first term. And then it has an A with a subscript of N. And it has A, N minus 1. And you're always going to write that A, N minus 1. And what that represents is it means take the term before it. So with recursive, you find a term by looking at the term right before. And then plus D. So D is our common difference like we talked about on the last example. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the parts in here that I need to change. So our first term would be how tall is one step. So we can tell, so I'm going to erase this. So our first step is 26 centimeters tall. So I'm erasing that first part. So it's A1 equals 26. Now I need to erase the common difference, which would be also 26, because we're increasing by 26 each time. And that right there would be our recursive formula for that situation. So then it says, using the recursive formula, find the height above the ground of the third step. So like I said, with recursive, you have to know what the height is. of. In order to find the third step, you need to know the second step. In order to know the second step, you need to know the first step. So it's the recursive for formula is not great at finding like the 99th um, term because you'd have to find the 98th term and so on. So I'm going to start with we know A1 is 26. So that means that A2 would mean we'd have to take the first term and add 26. So it would be 26 plus 26, which is 52. And the third term, we would take our second term, which is 52, plus 26. 
and we get 78. So that means the height above the ground of the third step would be 78 centimeters. Okay, example three. So it says the cost of renting a bicycle is given in the table. How can you represent the cost using an explicit formula? So in the previous example, we talked about the recursive formula. Now we're going to talk about the explicit formula. So again, let me write it out first. So the explicit formula is just one line. It has A with a subscript of N is equal to A1 plus D times n minus 1. So we have to replace the a1 and the d with the terms that that they were or with the values that they represent. So a1 we can tell from our table is the first term is 26. And then d is how much are we going up by each time? So if we go from 26 to 38, 38 to 50, 50 to 62, we're increasing by 12. So that is our explicit formula, but sometimes we're asked to simplify it. So I would simplify it by distributing the 12. So that would become 26 plus 12n minus 12, and then combining like terms. So 12n and then 26 minus 12 would be 14. So this right here is simplified, and then again, our original function is an explicit formula, but this right here is simplified. So then it says, what's the cost of renting the bicycle for 10 days? So here's the nice part. We talked about recursive is not great for finding the 99th term, but explicit is great because all you do is plug in the term number that you want. So if I want to find the cost after 10 days, I'm finding the 10th term, in the sequence, which would just be taking 12 times 10 plus 14. So all I did was plug 10 in where n goes. So then if I evaluate that, that's 120 plus 14, so that would be $134. So that's how we use explicit formula. So these last two examples are going back and forth. So how do I take explicit formula and turn it into recursive? Or how do I write a recursive, or how do I take a recursive formula and write an explicit? So this says the recursive formula for the height above the ground of the nth step of the stairs is shown as. So they kind of wrote it backwards here. So I'm going to write it in the way we're used to seeing it. So it says a1 is 7, and a n equals a n minus 1 plus 4. So this is our recursive formula. So we want to write the explicit formula. So in order to write the explicit formula, I need to know the first term and the common difference. So we can tell, we already know that the first term is 7, and the common difference we know is going to be that number right there, whatever we're adding or subtracting each time. So our d value would be 4. So this would be a sub n equals 7 plus 4 times n minus 1. Now again, sometimes it's going to ask me to simplify. So I'm going to distribute. Then I'm going to combine like terms. So this would be 4n plus 3. So there's my explicit formula. So our last example is giving us an explicit formula and wants us to write the recursive. So I'm going to write this again down here. So we have an equals 1 plus one half, oops, one half n. Okay, so now if we think about our recursive formula, we need to know, again, we need to know our first term and we need to know our common difference. So looking at this here, we can tell our common difference. So that's our d value. Whatever value is with your n is going to be, so we can look back at our previous example, common difference 4 became that common difference right there, 4. So the value that's with the n is always going to be your common difference. So we know that we're adding 1 half each time. So I can put that into my recursive formula. Now in order to find the first term, 
I can just plug 1 into my explicit formula. So that would be 1 plus 1 half, which is 1 and a half, or we could say 3 halves. It depends on, so when you're doing the problem, make sure you answer it in the way that the, the program is asking you to. So if it says leave it as an improper fraction, then you can do that. If it says it's okay to write it as a decimal, you can write it as 1.5 or 1 and a half. Okay, as a mixed number. Okay, let me know if there are any questions.